On the 16th of February, I was taken by a police escorted ambulance and put into a mental asylum against my will. I spent 11 nights there and it was fucked up. <laughs> and uh, I believe there will come a day when our civilization will come to see involuntary internalizations for the barbaric practice that they are and will understand that this is a mental health hazard these places especially for those people who like me identify as empaths because those are the people who constitute the main population to whom these situations happen the following video is footage from the first couple of days after I was released. Enjoy! Sta la puta vista nunca! Sea para entrar, obligado a seguir. Para allá donde te llevan, pero para salir te buscas tú la puta vida. Esto es un puto laberinto. ¿Qué coño es la salida? ¿Cuántas salidas puede haber? Uy, sí. Cuánta paz, irónico. Hay un, hay un piano. ¿O es un pianista? Porque yo esto no lo he visto. ¡Ah, es un pianista! ¡Hombre! ¡Qué bonito! ¡Mis cojones! ¡Qué bonito! ¡Qué prisión tan hermosa! Está, está muy bien hecha. Contra el virus, sí. El virus de la apatía. El virus de la apatía no habla nadie. No me puedo creer que esté saliendo. Estoy saliendo. Sí, la luz se ve más fuerte una vez estaba en la profunda oscuridad del lugar este. I was supposed to speak in English, but what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? This is how we celebrate, I guess. At least right now. Coffee. Real coffee. No sobre descafeinado. Descafeinado de sobre no. Real, café real. Even the, like the light is too much. It's it still feels like light is too much. And I feel like like I'm scared of moving around. I asked a friend to come to help me walk home or something. I'm not gonna walk home. It's too far to walk. But I feel I feel so vulnerable. I feel like I want to go inside into the coffee, coffee shop instead of being outside, which is what I would usually want, naturally. This was hell. It's not, it's not right. It was fucking hell and I left it even worse.
I'm so glad I left right now because it got worse. It got way worse. What the fuck? I'm so grateful to just be at home without the screaming of people, without the constant coming and going from the nurses. It's so fucked up in there. It really is. It really is. It's way beyond you can imagine, especially for somebody who's sensitive. I mean, who's not like somebody who's not sensitive is part of it. You either are sensitive and can feel how fucked up that shit is or you are not and you're part of it. You choose. You need to decide which side are you on. Are you on the side of treating people like human beings and, and full adults who have freedom of choice over their bodies and their lives? Or you're in favor of treating some people who look a certain way and talk a certain way and do certain things in a different way, in an infantilizing way? In a condescending way. You choose, bro. There's only two sides. And the truth is one. The truth is love. And when you have love in your heart, you know you have the patience. When you have love in your heart, you have all the time in the world to be present with somebody and, and, and this person's pain. Which is this what the system does not want us to do. I'll tell you why. Because there's people making profit off of it. If there was something that was fully easily accessible in that place, was drugs. And not the fun kind, not the spiritual kind, not the kind that opens your consciousness, but the kind that makes you feel dizzy and sleepy and dead alive. You become a zombie. They're just dead, alive. That's what it is. Dude, I'm so grateful I'm home. I can't believe I'm just... This peace. The warmth of, of the lights. The warmth of this. Stufa. My stuff. What the fuck, man? Something else <clears throat> is that you have privacy and you can masturbate. Your sexual health gives you thanks for it. You might be giggling about it, but come on. How important that part of our lives is. How important is it to, to have the privacy to be able to get back into your body. Reconcile with your body. Give yourself some tenderness and some love. Like what the fuck? How am I supposed to feel better if I'm surrounded by people screaming and shouting and calamity all around people suffering just people suffering yeah did I just masturbate? yes I did proud to say it I was born in May May is May May May, May masturbation month
That's what it is. I will always predicate in favor of masturbation. It is one of those things that are underestimated when it comes to people's health. And doing it in a loving way, in a conscious way, is the best way to do it. In a connected way. A way that connects you with your body, not disconnects you with it. Don't don't use your body, because you could be raping yourself too. So anyway, good night. I'm so grateful to be my bad man. My bad man. My bad man. My beautiful, beautiful bed. What day is today? Today is Tuesday. Today is the second day that I'm free. I swear to God, if nothing else, this experience has shown me how much I appreciate my freedom. Every little pleasure, every single bit of something that I choose to do by my own will and nobody is forcing me to do it, is so big. Every single little little pleasure is so big, so huge. I don't feel as emotional. I do feel strong. I was talking to one of the patients that is still there, inside, and it's been beautiful to be able to, to give her some support and to remind her of, of she, it feels like she's desperate and nobody will give her any support of the kind that she needs. All she needs is somebody to remind her that she is strong. All she needed was somebody to tell her, I love you. I'm here for you. It's okay. You're going to be okay. Take care of yourself as much as you can. Breathe. Relax. It's all going to be okay. You don't get that. The nurses don't have time for that. I swear to God, the nurses don't have time to sit with you and put their hand on your back. They just don't. So we have to do it to each other. The patients do that to each other. Also, I did something today. I smoked a tiny, tiny, itty bitty little bit of weed. Just a tiny little bit. And my heart rate started rising. And it did not feel good. So I must admit, although... I'm so grateful to marijuana. I'm so grateful to cannabis. For all that it's given me. I'm so grateful for all the times that it's been there to help me with my anxiety, to help me open my mind to more possibilities, more optimistic possibilities, more creative possibilities. And in as much as that journey has been beautiful, it's not for all the time. It's not for every time. It's certainly not for this time when I need to ground. When I need to ground, when I need all of me to get on the path of mission, of service, in a way that is going to require my brain to be on a on its own strength, relying on itself. Maybe that's what it is. Because it it did make me feel anxious and I and I had to calm myself down. Mm-hmm. You learn something every day. <laughs> also, there's something about this right now which is me getting used to the, the idea that I'm a youtuber now and being a youtuber means that whatever you're you've set yourself to 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 tell in those videos as a youtuber because it, it does feel like an identity completely then in a way you are required to take that into account and make those videos and it this is coming at the same time that I'm recovering from 
from an intense trauma. So it's being especially challenging. <clears throat> but hey, that's where the fun is as well. Oh my god, the sun is coming out! I'm gonna go get some sunshine on my face. And I guess I'm falling in love a little bit with... I'm like, I'm finding the ways to fall in love with the idea of being a YouTuber. Because it certainly comes with judgment. And I really want to tell my story. At this time, I really feel like I must. I, I don't want anyone else going through what I went through. That system needs to change and I have a powerful voice <coughs> that I can bring to the table. Okay, so I guess that's the end of this video. And cut. So take a breath for a moment and as you take this breath, Feel this magnificent heart chakra and center of yours. Your greatest sadness is when the heart is unacknowledged. When the heart is unacknowledged by another human being, when the heart is unacknowledged in a global action. You feel it, so many of you who are wired that way, because you can feel the missing part for humanity and it grieves you to watch humanity play out the same mistake over and over again. But here is the good news. The one, we will say, or more positive side effect, of this very fractious, difficult, intense period you are in right now is going to be that even though it is uncomfortable at times, you are going to see a rising up among humanity of humans saying no to the heartlessness, humans owning their own heart in an all new way. And that is why there are so many things that will come your way that will try to cut the heart out. So if you see or feel anything that seems inhumane, it is important for you to stand for it or stand up to it. For some of you that will be through your voice and your action, for others that might just be energetic. You might say inside yourself, no, I do not agree with this. It might not be your fight to get involved with in a human way, but it is very important that rather than feeling barraged or a victim to the heartlessness that you see on your planet, that instead you own that your power is in your heart and your heart is seeing, feeling, tracking everything. I am weird and here is how. Let me show you, let me say it.